Hello friends, Warps here. Round two of the cool tips, tricks, and techs I've got for you. So you can block Huntsman's projectile with physical objects. You can use cabinets and stuff, but they break. However, stuff like gear that could be easier to carry around because it's in your inventory also works. You just have to hold the item over his gun hand, his right hand, where the bullet originates. Oh, and another Huntsman thing, while I was messing around with him, I found out you can just throw him on the ground directly. He will miss his shot because the rotation that you are throwing him over with, if you do it violent enough, very short delay between when you have to grab and when you have to start rotating. So it might be difficult for people with low sensitivity. I use pretty high sensitivity and I use raw Excel to do a custom mouse sensitivity curve for acceleration. So results may vary, let me know. You can use the pocket cart as a alternative duck bucket if you just make the duck jump in it, which is extremely simple. He just does it on his own pretty much. And then you put it into a little cubby like this and the duck will spam jump. Some areas he'll kind of wiggle out over time, but some he won't. You probably know you can save teammates from the grip of the alien, aka the mentalist, aka Megamind. But what you might not know is that once he goes into the red phase here, after the clap, you can freely just run in and grab people. If you get them far enough away, they won't take any damage, and even if you remain inside, you won't take any damage. It's completely safe at that point to run in. So just go in, grab people, and try to get out of range with their bodies. You can use the small med kit and some other items, but the small med kit is convenient. To block the line of sight of peepers, as long as you're not like super close to them, to despawn them, even if you're in a bad spot and can't reach the doorway or don't know where it is. There are some other uses for the small med kit, which does compound on its usefulness, which is the obvious ability to hold it above you while sneaking, to force yourself down into super sneaky mode, like you're under a bed for ultra stealth. And then you can also use it to tap on the ground for the Huntsman, to make him waste his shots, to transition into just grabbing him and throwing him on the ground. Do you know when a clown comes up and lasers all your stuff off the cart, just shaves it? Well, you can somewhat do something about that if you act quickly. And if you just grab the clown like this and rotate him, you can control the directions of all of his attacks. You could just roll to dodge everything or even point the laser at something else. If the Shadow Child is ever in a pretty bad spot, or is endangering your teammates, or you, you just want him gone, you can hit him with anything, and he'll teleport away, including a tumble. Tumbles will do five damage to you if you do that, though. There's some pretty fancy ways you can just put large stuff in the extractor on really crazy areas and have it still count which really helps because it's not so much in the way as long as it fits in that big square it works now there is some way you can use to tell the actual edges of the extract there's going to be a new feature in the next patch that shows like a red outline like a laser guide if something's out but see this see the hole at the top that is the exact guide you need to stay in See how this thing I wedged up there is like perfectly inside, just barely? That thing is gonna live. And I'll also show you what it's like to be extracted. Live. And I have God mode. It worked. So the spewer is actually a fairly decent weapon if you get it on your head. A little inconsistent, so you can't kill like the ultra dangerous fast things, but for something like a clown, or like the medium guys. It's fairly effective. You can see how much damage this is doing. That one volley did 70 total damage. The clown especially is vulnerable to it just because it's so easy to manipulate what it's doing. So if you ever have a clown plus spewer combo on the first stage, it's just, just a free clown kill. You don't even have to find any items to kill it with. You can just vomit on it. Oh, and the monster orb you're about to see, if it has a white outline, like edges, it means it's still in its invulnerability phase. Once it turns pure purple, it is damageable. So I was playing with Bread the other day, and he proposed we try blocking the spawns by spreading out in a chain from the extract to the truck. So we gave it a try, and it did seem like the spawns weren't along that line. We tried it again later, and it seemed to work again. Don't have a 100% guarantee, but it's a maybe.
And from Bread's video, with permission, I have these charts, a little preview of what he's got in there. Pretty nice info. Pretty much just showing the amount of monster spawn slots. You can see here from quotas three to five, it's one, 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 so three total monsters. But at six, it already goes to six, double the monsters instantly. So there is some stuff you might want to know. And at the top right, you can see that is the monster inactivity timer. When the monster first spawns in, when the game starts, it will just AFK for for a while so if you don't go forward and you kind of just sit back and loot everything along the way you won't activate the monsters and the respawn timer at the bottom right is how long you have if they despawn times three multiplier if you kill them they'll be dead for a long time but don't take too long if you want more specifics and want to see the rest of the guide it is my first link in the description it's pretty possible to take melee weapons and angle them in certain ways so that the handles will like push you up and allow for weird movement not like super useful but people might find some more things i kind of found you could skate forward on the frying pan to go extra fast but you kind of stun yourself you can also just use the handle of the inflatable hammer if you look it down to just push yourself at like 1.5 times walking speed so speed run strat Okay, so doors are surprisingly threatening in this game, and to kill them, you do stuff like this. You can open them and then just absolutely sprint into them to break their hinges. You just want to take an action that separates the hinge from the wall as far as possible. If you, like, partially close these and then ram the cart through them at this angle, you can break off the station doors pretty easily. You can also do it with sprinting. It's all about just making the hinge separate from the wall. Now for wizard land, if you hit the doors at a decent angle with four speed at least, you can start to stun yourself, which is really, really bad for getting away. So be a little careful with that. I don't know if this is intended, and if it is, I hope they fix it because it's kind of weird how threatening doors are, especially in any room with a death pit, which is like every room it past a certain quota. It's very, very dangerous to the point where you have to rip off like every door and throw them in a pit, which is why I even know how to break all these doors. For these doors, it's pretty simple. If you have enough strength, you can literally just slam them like normally and they break off. Otherwise, it's kind of just the same deal. The Wizard World doors are pretty frail. Now for the Headman Manor doors. I don't like these. Even with just two speed, hitting the door at a pretty normal angle trying to run through it, stuns you very very dangerous near the massive amount of death pits really don't like it these doors are also pretty fragile unless there's something blocking their opening and closing if you slam these doors against the wall their hinge almost automatically breaks if you do it with enough force so the headman manor doors are fairly easy to break now you can make some plays with doors you can put one or two doors if they're thin doors in a stack and a huntsman will walk onto them. And then when he walks off of them, he will trip because he loses elevation and thinks it was stairs. So bridges are also kind of useful as you can use them to block over the death pit holes on some maps. Some of them are small enough that you can actually use doors in this way, which is pretty convenient if somebody wants to just rip them off. But you don't have to, and you can just throw them into a death pit if you don't want to bother with that. This isn't a tip, but I just wanted to see how many upgrade boxes I could spawn and have the alien slam without crashing, though it did make my friend DC. Oh, good, good, good. Yes, come here, come here, come here. Come, come, come. Yes, yes. Yes, do it. Oh, yeah. Make it rain. Ha, ha, ha. 